This is a continuation of the Chapter 18 discussion on special refrigeration systems and applications. If you did not listen to the first part of this lecture, um, please go back and do so first before this set. The next type of refrigeration we're going to talk about is vortex tube. Fluid or rotating or air rotating around an axis like a tornado is known as a vortex. A vortex tube creates a vortex from compressed air and separates it into two air streams one hot and one cold. It can be easily adjusted to deliver cold air down to negative 50 degrees or hot air up to 250 degrees when it's supplied with 100 psi compressed air at 70 degrees. The sequence of operation for the vortex tube is that compressed air enters a vortex generation chamber which is proportionally larger than a hot long tube. The chamber causes the air to rotate. Rotating air is discharged moving in a straight line along the inside surface of the tube. The compressed air expands into the tube and pressure decreases while the velocity of the airstream assumes near sonic speed, about 1000 rpm. Air follows a centrifugal path down the inside surface of the tube. A portion of the airstream is released through the control valve as hot air. The remainder of the airstream is forced to form cold air counterflowing the air upstream. Applications of the vortex tube include manufacturing, scientific work, cooling of the environmental chambers and electronic cabinets, and cooling of clothing. This is an example of a vortex used in industrial applications. We are cooling that drill. Um, another vortex tube picture is this. We have our inlet air that's filtered, we have a regulator, we have condensate with our cold air, and we have hot air exhaust. Vortex tube in a scientific environment, and vortex tube in individual cooling. Jet cooling systems are also used. A jet pump consists of a centrifugal pump and injector. It may replace the compressor in some air conditioning and refrigeration systems. Refrigerant jets use R11 or R12 as a working fluid. A steam jet is based on the fact that water under high pressure vacuum moves at a low, relatively low temperature. Evaporation occurs and reduces the temperature. Water is the refrigerant in the system. Only temperatures down to about 40 degrees are possible. Exhaust steam from a high pressure steam operating machine is often used for steam jet systems. The refrigeration jet uses refrigerant vapor at high pressure and high temperatures flowing through an injector nozzle to the condenser. Units are inefficient and require a large condenser to remove heat. It's often used in commercial installations where waste heat is available. This is an example of the jet cooling system. Notice the jet pump, the heat exchanger, and the condenser or the evaporator. Multi-stage systems can be known as cascade or compound system. A multi-stage system is a system with more than one stage of compression. We have two types, cascade and compound. In the cascade system, two separate refrigeration systems are interconnected. Since the system is actually two independent units, this allows for the use of two different refrigerators. The evaporator from one unit is used to cool the condenser of the second unit. This allows one unit to operate at lower temperature and pressure than possible using the same size single stage system. It's used to provide temperatures below negative 250 degrees. We have our low stage and high stage. They're separated by heat exchanger. The evaporator of your high stage unit cools the low, the condenser, it actually is the condenser of the low stage compressor. The compound systems obtain low temperatures using several compressors connected in series to the same refrigeration system. The increased performance and efficiency of low temperature refrigeration systems. The first stage compressor is larger than the second stage compressor. In each stage, the compressor gets smaller. The higher the stage, the more dense the vapor. This is an example of a compound system. Now the difference between the compound and the cascade is that the cascade we can use two different refrigerants. In a compound system we can only use a single refrigerant. The two stage systems can produce temperatures from negative 20 to 80, negative 80 degrees. Three stage systems can go down to negative 135 degrees. Another way, another type of refrigerant is refrigeration system is snow making. Artificial snow is created from a water spray into which compressed air is added. The water is broken up into a fine mist and freezes rapidly. The surrounding atmosphere must be at a low temperature, 30 degrees or lower. With a low relative humidity, snow may be made at temperatures as high as 35 degrees Fahrenheit. 
In general, the ground must be frozen before snowmaking is practical. This is an example of a snowmaking opera machine on a ski slope. Heat pipe is one of the fastest passive heat transfer devices known. The DIN heat pipe principle has a heat pipe designed as a loop. One-way fluid displacement is enhanced by pressure difference between the hot section and the cold section of the loop. This is an example of a heat pipe. Heat is absorbed and heat is released for, through condensation. The increased, the higher the temperature, the increased moisture re is removed. Loop heat pipes are used in air conditioning systems, allow for lower indoor relative humidities. Moisture removal is increased by 30 to 50 percent, and a decrease in the cooling load on the compressor, which decreases power usage. Remember, in air conditioning, one of the highest uses of power is the removal of humidity. It's particularly useful in very humid climates. Operational procedures include of the heat, heat pipe. Air enters the air conditioning and counters a pre-cool section of the heat pipe, which causes vaporization of the phase change fluid contained inside the heat pipe. Rapid heat transfer of the heat pipe moves thermal energy about 8 to 12 degrees around the cooling coil to the reheat section of the heat pipe, which is replaced in the airstream. The overall protocol and reheat effect provides for increased moisture removal by the cooling unit. A heat pipe system adds no heat to the condition space and uses no mechanical devices or additional energy input. It can be used to heat or cool. This is an example of a heat pipe. Cold outside air comes to a warm supply air. Hot inside air goes to cool exhaust air. In other words, it's a heat exchanger. Immersion freezing is considered fast freeze freezing. Immersion freezing consists of dipping articles to be frozen into a liquid refrigerant. Specially prepared liquid R12 or R22 is used for fast freezing. For very low freezing, liquid carbon dioxide or liquid nitrogen can also be used. Um, a lot of your fresh foods will go through immersion or fast freezing. The temperature is so low that this refrigerant should never touch a worker. This would result in immediate freezing of the skin. Liquid refrigerant boils and is vaporized by the absorbing heat from the food. Larger installations recover the vaporized refrigerant using a refrigerated fin coil placed on the liquid refrigerant. This will condense the vapor. The condensed vapor may be collected and returned to the refrigerant storage tank. If liquid carbon dioxide or nitrogen is used, the refrigerant is expendable. Cryogenic refrigerants use a temperature between absolute zero which is for negative 459.7 degrees and negative 250 degrees. Substances may be completely different in character at those temperatures. Gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, argon, hydrogen, and helium may be liquefied and separated at these temperatures. Three methods are used to create these low temperatures. You have an expansion process with heat exchangers. We could have an expansion process with heat exchangers and gases, and we can also use multiple cascade systems. Cryogenics are used for a variety of purposes. Nitrogen instantly freezes plant and animal tissue. Liquid oxygen is used to store millions of tons of rocket fuel. Liquid nitrogen poured into ambient temperatures immediately become vapor. The temperature of the vapor is used is negative 320 degrees. It's used in emergent freezing. This is an example of a cryogenic refrigeration unit. The unit will immediately freeze what's ever on the trays. Liquid nitrogen is used for freeze drying. A strong vacuum is reused to remove all ice crystals. Food is kept completely dry, requiring no refrigeration. When you're using cryogenic equipment, be careful. You need to use special care when operating and servicing. Liquids are ultra cold and will severely injure you. Parts of the system are also ultra cold and could cause injury. Always wear goggles and gloves when servicing any part of cryogenic equipment. Cryogenic equipment temperatures are very low. Liquid refrigerant will instantly freeze any part of the body it touches. Due to low temperatures, special materials are used in the construction, including stainless steel, copper alloys, and aluminum. Electrical devices must be of special design and construction to handle the cold temperatures. Any lubricant used must be a dry lubricant. Another method of refrigeration is ozoned ice and water. Ozone generators can safely kill bacteria and food. The unit generates Oxygen ozonized make up water for ice making. A separate ozonized water spray is provided for sanitizing equipment and eliminating surface bacteria. 
Ozone sanitizes the ice, ensuring the surface bacteria are killed and no additional contaminants are introduced. It's designed to work with flake ice makers. Flake ice has unique properties for allowing it to retain more residual ozone for release on the products as it melts. This is an example of an ozone ice ozone water generator. The water will be oz added ozone to it before it flows into the ice making machine. We also need to mention the Stirling cycle. It was developed in 1816 by Robert Stirling. It's used in some refrigeration insulations that operate at negative 110 down to negative 300 degrees. When it's used as a three-stage system, it produces temperatures down to negative 450 degrees. The units are compact and use helium and hydrogen gases. It uses one cylinder and two pistons with stationary regenerator between the pistons. The volume of the gas, trap gas remains the same. The regenerator collects heat during the operation. Gas cools by expansion and is then heated by warming. The left end of the cylinder is water-cooled. The right end of the cylinder is the cooled unit. The regenerator must allow gas to pass through and have a good heat-absorbing ability. This is the example of the Stirling cycle. You have a left piston and a right piston. When dealing with any specialized refrigeration, you need to make sure that electrical equipment must be fully grounded by use of polarity pug or ground wire. You need to follow local and national refrigeration and electrical codes when servicing and installing these units. Prior to checking in the thermoelectric system, get a wiring diagram of the system. Use the diagram and confirm that the polarity is not reversed. You need to be careful when checking expendable refrigeration systems. Be certain safety doors are open and the truck body vented prior to entering the conditioned space. Prior to entering a unit being cooled, be certain refrigerant valve close are, valves are closed. Always wear safety goggles when checking a unit that uses refrigerant. Prior to working on any part of an expendable system, you must know the required pressures. Prior to working on a system, know the nature of the safety valves and controls used in the system. Temperatures in the cryogenic valves in the cryogenic range are below negative 250. They can seriously remove your body heat from skin, and flesh may be severely frozen before you feel the cold. Most expendable refrigeration systems use carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Humans and animals cannot live in the atmospheres of either of these substances. When handling any type of refrigerants, wear safety gog goggles and face shields or, and gloves. Make sure to no liquid refrigerant is ever allowed to touch your skin. Handling refrigerants like liquid nitrogen, liquid air, and liquid carbon dioxide is extremely dangerous. Always short circuit any capacitors. This still will discharge the capacitors. Always be sure that water pipes and radiators are grounded. If the live black wire contacts the ground, a circuit breaker or fuse will blow. Someone touching both live wire and ground may receive a very severe shock.